Hi, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Laura. Hi, hello, welcome. Today we are going to do a video that I just saw Haley film. So this is actually the day after. I Well, I didn't see her film it, obviously. I, I watched her video on it. But this is the favorite eyeshadow from A to Z. Um, I believe this was created by Jen Phelps. I will have her link down below. I'm just going to steal all of the links that Haley has in her description box and put them in this video if I'm being quite honest because I don't know who all has done this. So everyone that's done it that I am aware of will be listed down in the description box below, including Haley, my soul sister. Love her so much. Um, I have a big, ooh, I have my like giant bin that I usually use for my empties right in front of me and I have gone through and I've listed all of the eyeshadows down from A to Z. I do have an honorable mention. We'll get to that at the very end, but I know that this video is going to be pretty long, so I'm not going to waste my time like spieling you for a little bit. So I'm just going to go down from A to Z, tell you what my favorite eyeshadow are. Some of them are actually pretty surprising and I... I'm surprised that some of my favorite palettes in my collection didn't make it into this video. So I am absolutely shocked. It's it's wild to think that some of my all-time favorite palettes, like my top three favorite palettes, are not in this, which is just crazy. Like, without further ado, let's just talk about my favorite shade, A to Z. So the first one, I'm actually, I had another shade in mind initially, and then these palettes have come into my life. And of course, I had to pick a shade that I am just so, so in love with. So in love with. And I couldn't just say no to the shade. It's one of my all-time favorite colors ever, ever. And it comes from my Natasha Denona Green Brown Palette. And the shade that I selected, it's it was pretty easy for me to select this shade because I know that this in particular is one of my all-time favorite shades. This shade is called Antique Olive. It's just one of those kind of goldy greens that just look so good, but it also is like muted enough where you can get away with wearing it daily. Like I could wear this shade to work. It's it's neutral enough, but it has enough like almost hidden color where it just gives you a slight colorful look without being too like wham in your face kind of thing so antique olive and the formula of this natasha denona palette is just spectacular it is so divine the, the the mattes or the mattes are so creamy natasha denona does some of the most phenomenal mattes and then the metallics in this palette in particular and in the larger like the blue purple palette are much better than some of the mini palettes that i've tried so I, I love this. I'm, I'm so happy that I have that shade in my collection. So the next shade is actually a single eyeshadow and I'm going to just hold up the single eyeshadow, not the whole single eyeshadow palette because I have spoilers obviously, but this is a newer shadow to my collection and I actually have never used this on my eye. Some of these shades I... I swatched a few that like of the shades that entice me the most and this was just like the, the favorite one that I swatched out of my B shades and this is the shade by Kristen Lee Cosmetics. This is the shade Bloom. It is so gosh dang gorgeous. It's, it's a pink shade that has a beautiful, incredibly pigmented blue shift to it. It is just so unbelievably gorgeous. I, I cannot wait until like the spring comes around and I can really play with that shade a little bit more. Maybe I'll take it out for more of the winter months like February also. We'll, we'll, we'll see what I do with my Build Your Own palette then. Another shadow that I kind of was not sure until I compared and like swatched some of my shades um, comes from my Going Coconuts palette. My C shade is actually the shade called Coco Crush. It's this middle shade right here. It kind of looks like just a run-of-the-mill kind of boring palette if I'm being quite honest, but there's just something about that shade in particular, especially compared to the other C shades I have in my collection. It's just gorgeous. It's so pretty, and I think I have pretty similar shades elsewhere in my collection, and that's fine. I just, that shade is just it just is like a melty, buttery metallic. It's so pretty. The D shade was pretty easy for me as well. Um, I followed suit with Haley. This is our favorite single eyeshadow in our collection. And I know when um, myself, Haley, and Kaylee did the single eyeshadow tag, 
Kaylee doesn't have this shade, but she has a shade extremely similar. So I like that we were all kind of on the same wavelength in picking a shade like this. This one in particular is Dandelion's Company in Dahlia. It is one of my favorite eyeshadow. It is my favorite eyeshadow at the moment in my collection. It's just so pretty and it looks exactly like the shade Electric if you are familiar with the subculture palette, except Dahlia performs 8 million times better. It is just so much better than the formulation of Electric. And like, if you can see it in camera, hopefully you can catch the shift uh, as I'm kind of moving it around. It almost has like a peachy base to it. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so freaking pretty. Then for the letter E, it actually comes from my Kaleidos uh, VR Neon, the Futurism 4 palette. And I had a couple E shades, but this one just, I have nothing like it in my collection. I have, I think, never actually put this on my eye, but something about it is just ooh, so unbelievably dreamy. It's this shade here called Easter Egg. It is just such an intensely metallic, pigmented, rich, hot pink. I don't own anything quite like this in my collection anywhere else. I have hot pink mats, but nothing that's like that uh, unctuous of a metallic or like a, a sheeny shade like that. Then my F shade, I, I thought it was going to be a pretty easy one for me to pick. And then I kind of went back and forth for for a hot second I had three or four different F shades and they all kind of looked the same they were all purples and I was very surprised by being so enticed in having F shades as my as a purple like I am not used to having purple shades as like some of my favorites this one was fairly easy I every time I reach into the um, magic palette by Juvia's Place I'm so drawn to Faso here it is one of my all-time favorite shades it is just such a beautiful cool tone blue purple um shifty shade it is so dreamy and I know in my favorite eyeshadow per palette a lot of those kinds of shades and this one I believe was my favorite eyeshadow in this palette um many of those shades end up being my favorite shades in the palette there's such just something dreamy about them it's just so enticing and so dreamy um, G was pretty easy for me. It had to be Glamora from my Futurism 1 Sci-Fi Green by Kaleidos. It is just this beautiful, beautiful, um, iguana-esque, like alien-esque. It's along the same lines as Antique Olive, as you'll see in the swatch. It's a lot less impactful than Antique Olive, and I don't know if it's because I swatch this shade quite often and maybe my oils have built up on the top of the pan, but, or maybe the Natasha Denona shade is just newer in my collection, so it's just a little bit buttery. But as you can see in the swatch clip, it's just a little bit less impactful as the Natasha Denona Antique Olive shade. But again, it's one of those shades that's like subtly colorful and you can wear it all the time and it's so gorgeous. I absolutely love that shade. I don't reach for those Futurism palettes enough and I think it's just because they're smaller and I, I have a harder time comprehending a full like a full look with them. We go back to singles for my letter H shade, and this one I was in a toss-up, and then ultimately I was like, no, I, I kind of knew it was going to be this shade all along. This is a Bare Minerals depotted and repanned shade. They come in like rounded square pans. I don't even think Bare Minerals sells these anymore, but this was from a duo called The Winner Is, and this is the shade Hit Single. It's just so dreamy and every time i'm like mm, i don't reach for this enough maybe i should declutter it i i use it and i'm like why do i ever even contemplate getting rid of this this is such a beautiful shade it kind of reminds me of one of the shades that was in the urban decay vice palette i think it was the vice 2 it was like a i think the shade was like kush or something and that shade is so beautiful i used to have that palette and that shade um, hit single kind of was one of the reasons why I could have parted with that palette when I did. It was years and years ago now, but I, I think that shade is absolutely stunning. The shade I kind of surprised me. I was tossed up between two different eye shades in my collection. Ultimately, I went ahead with the Bare Necessities palette, this guy here. Um, and I, I ended up picking the shade here called Idle Hour. It's just a really soft... Um, a really, really soft 
gold shade, like a white golden shade. So absolutely gorgeous. It was really tossed up between that shade and then the shade in the Saharan palette by Juvia's Place called um, Iman. And Iman was just a little bit too icy white and Idle Hour was just a little bit more neutral white. Both would be great inner corner highlight shades. Then for J, I don't have that many J colors in my collection. I only have maybe three and this one just won out because the other ones were either too deep or too orange. So I went ahead with my one of my favorite palettes. This is the Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian by ColourPop and I went ahead and I selected the shade Justice, just a matte with glitter. So I believe those are called like sequin. I think that was what Tati coined. Um, it's a matte with shimmer in it. When I use it in the crease, you actually, this shade has a ton of glitter in it. So you can see the glitter pick up in it. Um, in a swatch, it's even more impactful that there's glitter inside of this shade. But I think that this is absolutely beautiful. It would be a really pretty like all over the lid kind of shade. If you want kind of like a subtly matte, but kind of sheeny shade this would be a good one for that and it's just it's so pretty and it's very pigmented it's very beautiful my k shade surprised me i wasn't really expecting to pick anything from this palette and i surprised myself and ended up going with this palette and it is my warrior 2 palette by juvia's place this is an all matte palette which is kind of why i don't really gravitate and reach into this palette all too often but it's a shame that i don't because the shades are are so beautiful and they're a very soft formula for mattes i went with the shade here called kana i only have a few k shades in my collection and they're all um, kind of this kind of tone of a matte shade. This one in particular though was the most neutral out of them and I just liked it the most when I swatched them. So it's, it's beautiful. It's a great everyday shade. That palette in general is like a great everyday palette or a great staple palette to have because it's all matte and it's all necessary shades. Then my, where did you go? My L palette or my L shade, it was I feel like tossed up between a few different shades, but ultimately I went with my Kaleidos Futurism 3 Astro Pink palette. And there's just something about this shade in particular. This is the shade Lightyear. It's just so intense. I, I'm working on completing something um, where some of the shades are depotted, by the way. So just don't mind those. But this shade Lightyear is just so impactful. It's just so incredibly metallic it's just wham beautiful and it kind of reminds me of like what i would imagine really metallic cotton candy to look like i know that's kind of weird but that's kind of like every time i use that i'm like if cotton candy was metallic this would be the shade that it would be and that's just really a weird way to think about that m was pretty easy actually some of the next like the last half of the alphabet was relatively easy for me to pick my shades it's really the beginning half of the alphabet that was kind of challenging to me um the a lot of these are going to be juvia's place but my m shade comes from my deuce palette and this shade is so pretty it is this shade here called macarons this is just everything i want an eyeshadow to be it is just so impactful it is just so creamy and buttery and that shade just is so dreamy it's absolutely dreamy and i i i cannot get enough of this palette the only dud shade again is mont blanc and that shade just sucks and it's not a good shade then my end shade comes from my magic palette by juvia's place and i went with uh, the shade nubia here it's just a beautiful beautiful gorgeous gold. Um, it was between this shade and another one in the Kaleidos palette called Nuclear. And they're very, very similar. Nubia just is much more intense and much more in your face right off like one finger swatch. So that's why I went with that one. Then we go again to the Magic palette by Juvia's Place. My favorite O shade is called Oshun. It is this beautiful, beautiful, oh, cotton candy again, kind of pinky shade. I feel like I put a lot of pinks in this um, favorite shade thing, which is very weird because I don't normally find myself gravitating towards pinks, but this shade is just so gorgeous, so gorgeous. And that was definitely the reason why I had to pick that one. Then we go back to the Deuce palette for my P shade. 
and I went ahead and I selected the shade Puffs. Again, another pink one. So it's kind of weird. We have so many pinks, especially right in a row, but Puffs is just so gorgeous. I absolutely love that shade. I think it is just so unique. Um, honestly, I would have picked a lot more shades in this palette, but um, it was very hard for my T shade, which we'll get to in a bit, but um, Tarte was definitely a runner up in, in that. But that is that guy. I think I only have three or two or three Q shades and one Q shade I just am not interested at all. It's definitely like fantasy Laura kind of makeup, but I went ahead with my Natasha Denona mini nude palette. Now, I did kind of talk a little trash about how these little mini palettes don't perform as well as the larger Natasha Denona palettes that I've tried. However, I only have like two Q shades and this was just like the lesser of two evils, I guess. And coin here spelled Q-U-O-I-N. Um, the mattes again, Natasha Denona does great mattes. It's more of the shimmer shades, especially this one that's just kind of a dud. Um, but coin is just a gorgeous like staple matte shade that you can use with any any look that you're creating. It's very, very staple in anyone's collection, really. Then we go to R and I knew it was going to be this shade. This is my Bare Necessities palette again. It's just something with this shade called Rumored, which is this guy here. It's just so gorgeous. It's kind of like a cool toned, taupey shade, almost like the same lines as Snake Eyes is, um, if you are familiar with that shade by ColourPop, but it's just almost a little bit more taupey than Snake Eyes. It, I, it's hard to describe, but it's such a gorgeous shade. Then. I, I had a toss up between my S shades. So initially I had a totally different one and then I looked at my sheet and I was like, why did I pick this when I have this one in particular? So I went ahead with this guy. This is ColourPop Say I Do. I really did not like this shade at first and I have absolutely fallen in love with using this shade in particular. So this is just such a great staple crease shade for me, especially when I'm doing more cool toned purple pink looks. This is just such a gorgeous shade. And I, I mean, I can tell in person that I have like a little bit of a dip. I, gosh, I have a hairball. Everything sticks to the shirt. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in camera, maybe that I have just a baby, baby, baby dip in it. I love this shade. It's, it's one of my favorite color pop mattes. This one in particular out of like the pressed single mattes is probably the best performing in my opinion, matte shadows wise. It's just really, really blendable and creamy versus a lot of other color pop shades tend to be a little bit more firm or pressed and a little bit scratchy when you swatch them. This one is just absolutely gorgeous right off the bat. All right, now we're at like the bottom couple of the, of the sheet that I have. And the next one comes from my, this used to be Strobe Cosmetics. This is now Shroud Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. My tea shade that I love is this guy here. This is called Third Eye. It is just such a beautiful, um, like, anyone know what, like, those circus peanuts are? Like, that weird candy that not really anyone likes, but, like, my dad loves. I don't know. So it's kind of like one of those, like, nice peachy kind of shades. It's just so gorgeous. It is like a staple kind of matte shade um, in anyone's collection. It's absolutely gorgeous. Then another scene, we kind of bounce back to singles for a hot second. Um, my favorite U shade that I have in my collection, it wouldn't have been this if I didn't recently get these shades in, but it ended up being this JD Glow shade. This is in the shade Unexpected. It almost reminds me of Glass Bowl. I haven't swatched those two together, so I I have a feeling I'm going to compare some shades in my collection to each other, but this is unexpected. It's just so beautiful, and I don't know if you can really tell, but JD Glow shades just look like molten metal in the pan. It's so gorgeous. So I absolutely love this shade. It's definitely shiftier and like a duochrome kind of shade. It's, it's so stunning. And then we go to my... V shade, which comes from my Kaleidos Futurism 5 Electro Turquoise. I don't have that many V shades, and out of all of the V shades I have, this is definitely the one I like the most. So I went ahead with this shade here, which is called Voltaic. It's just a beautiful matte 
orange. So if you don't like a super intense in your face matte orange, you wouldn't like this shade, but I think that this is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is probably the most intimidating Kaleidos palette I have just based on the shades that are in it. I'm missing a, another like matte teal lighter version than this. Um, this is just a very intimidating palette to me. So I don't reach for it all too often, but the shades that are in there are, are very, very soft mattes. They're very gorgeous and very buttery. We go to another JD Glow shade for my W shade. Again, this would not have been in the W place if I didn't just recently get this. I compared this with my Wodabi shade that's in my Saharan palette by Juvia's Place, and this one just takes the cake. There's just something, again, there's like a molten metal element to this that just makes it so unbelievably enticing, and it's just so stunning and impactful and rich in pigment. It's just gorgeous. Then moving to an X shade, and I know X shades are very hard to come by in collections. I have one in my collection, otherwise it, I wouldn't have anything for this spot. I have this shade, which is XO Baby. I don't really like this shade. This is kind of the typical ColourPop pressed shadow or pressed single shadow formula that I am more familiar with. This is very scratchy to the touch. It, it's not that softly pressed. It's not a soft matte shade as opposed to that shade Say I Do, um, which is another matte color pop shade. This one's definitely just more scratchy. I feel like the camera is picking it up differently. This looks a lot more like craft macaroni and cheese at least in my monitor when I'm editing it'll probably look fine um, and more true to color but this is kind of one of those mattes that has a little bit of shimmer in it but once you swatch it it just looks matte so again this is the only x shade I have in my collection so that's kind of the only reason why I plugged it into this spot then we have my last couple shades the first one for Y comes again from my Magic Palette by Juvia's Place. I have a few Y shades. They're all, I think, by Juvia's Place. The one I went with was Yara, which is this one here. It's, again, kind of the same lines as that Bare Minerals shade hit single that we had in. Um, it's kind of just like a metallic. Kind of makes me think of like a money shade of green, um, but it's it's really pretty, and I, I really enjoy that shade. I don't, again, reach for it enough. Common theme. Then Z comes from my Masquerade palette, and I am not surprised, but I'm also a little surprised. So I don't, again, I have like three, four, maybe five shades that start with Z in my collection, and the one I went with, can we guess, can we guess? I mean, you can't really see the shade name, so who knows, but I went with this guy here. This is just such a beautiful, like, Caribbean blue, like, if you were on like one island in the Pacific or something and you looked out into the ocean, this is the color that I feel like the ocean would be. It's just so gorgeous and it's it's such a soft and like wham in your face kind of blue. It's absolutely stunning. Then I do have an honorable mention because I do have a couple shades in my collection that have names that start with numbers. So I figured I'd just kind of honorable mention because this is A to Z, not A to number. So I honorably mention this shade here called 8-Bit. Um, it is named with a literal number 8-Bit rather than like the spelling of 8. So that's just an honorable mention. I also have 518 by James Charles and Morphe. That in, and then like every other shade that is like not really named and it's just like number row, number column kind of thing. But 8-Bit is just, it's kind of a underperforming like in swatch, but once you use a brush, it plays much nicer. So I really enjoy that shade and it's very unique into my collection. And that is it. That is my favorite eyeshadows A through Z. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Please feel free to go ahead and do this, but I highly recommend checking out everyone else that's done this already. Let me know in the comments if you found any shades that you agree with or if you disagree with. I always find it very interesting how everyone's preferences are so totally different when it comes to favorite eyeshadows. Um, I definitely have a soft spot for greens, but when I do stuff like this or like swatching my favorite shade per palette, I always am surprised with 
greens not being number one all the time. So it's very, very surprising to me because greens are like my bread and butter of eyeshadow colors. But that is it. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying healthy, sane, and safe during this holiday season. And I hope you guys have a great day. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. Hey.